Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. It has now been one week since I've had my top surgery. Uh, so for those of you who may be new to my channel, I am a, a transgender guy and I have been on testosterone now for almost a year and a half and I just got my top surgery, uh, meaning that I got my uh, my chest, my, my breasts removed and everything. So. Uh, it's been one week now since I've done that, and um, uh, for anyone who's interested, there's a bunch of different types of top surgery um, or, or methods for having top surgery. Um, I had the most common one, which is known as the double incision, where they take uh, a section of skin um, off of where the breasts are, take all the, uh, the, the breast tissue out, um, and do what's known as a male breast reconstruction. So where women um, who have mastectomies will have um, breast reconstruction. Um, I had a male chest reconstruction instead so that my chest um, kind of looks a little bit more masculine and everything. So they don't necessarily take all, all the breast tissue. Um, they tend to leave some in and kind of um, help the, the, the pectoral muscles look a little bit more peckish, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, and at the same time, I also had one of the things that um, when women have mastectomies, they don't generally, unless they're having breast reconstruction, um, and then they'll have um, nipples uh, and things. So I also had a uh, nipple grafts as well. And my, my natural nipples were uh, reformed because my, my natural ones were you know, their their female nipples tend to be larger uh, in general than males, so they had they they cut they they, they resized them until they're smaller, and they and they moved them a, into a location that looked more masculine. Now that I have the flatter chest, um, so that's basically what I had done last week. It's been a week since I've been um, uh, in recovery. Uh, one of the things that that you do is, you know, regardless of of, of why you're having <laughs> the, uh, uh, the the chest uh, surgery done, uh, you usually end up with uh, what's called drains um, to drain out the fluid, so that you don't end up um, filling up with with fluid in your chest and everything, because you want obviously you want to keep it flat. Um, and so I've I still have my drains in. It's been a week. Um, I could have had them out two days ago, but apparently I was still draining a little bit too much. Um, for my doctor's liking, and so they were like, nope, keep them in for a few more days. And because my doctor is an hour and a half away from where I live, um, I'm just uh, opting to wait until my next post-op um, next Monday before I take the drains out. So I'm going to be wearing the drains for a, an extra few days longer than I uh, than they otherwise, because they, they, they actually wanted me to come in tomorrow on Thursday to, to ha have them taken out, and I'm like, yeah, I'm coming in Monday anyway, let's, you know, so we're just waiting. For that, so that's it's a bit of a pain to have to deal with having the drains in there, but um, at, at least you know, um, I, you know, I I don't have to drive down twice. Or I'm not driving. I'm having friends of mine drive because I'm still um, taking some drugs and stuff, and still not in a in a position to where I'd be comfortable doing my own driving, um, especially that long of a distance and everything. And since I'm still, at, it's you know, still healing over here, trying to, to deal with um, driving, and especially if, if there was any uh, any uh, accidents or anything like that, it's, it's better for someone else to be driving right now than for me uh, this soon after surgery. So... Um, thankfully, I have some really great friends. I had one friend drive me to and from surgery last week. I had another friend drive me to and from my first post-op this week. I have another friend driving me to and from my next post-op. And then I have no idea, because um, all of these post-ops are like, like really close back to back, like a week apart. Um, and I don't know if I'll have another one, you know, again, that close or if it'll be a few weeks or months before I get my next post-op um, to see the final results and everything. Uh, but right now everything's still, you know, pretty taped up and, and things and I've got an ace bandage right now that's like uh, compressing everything, trying to keep everything in place um, so that everything heals the way it's supposed to and where it's supposed to. Although, starting tomorrow, I'm actually, like, my, my doctor actually at the post-op said, you know what, uh, it, I'd recommend you get a compression vest. 
uh, one with a zipper because you know for um, the last two years I've been wearing binders um, to, to flatten my chest but because I, I have these incisions now trying to put a binder on right now would probably not be a good idea because they're they're hard to put on on a good day and there's a good chance that if I tried to slip one of those on they would um, it, I could I could tear open my stitches and everything else so trying to put a binder on right now would be a bad idea so I'm not gonna do that um, and and those binders the binders that are, are designed to um, to com compress and and you know your actual chest your actual breasts um, are not designed for uh, post-surgical uh, compression uh, so those are not a good idea for me to put on right now. Uh, they do make um, post-surgical compression vests with zippers or, or, or hooks or uh, uh, other types of closures, and so that's what I'm getting. Um, they're not cheap, but uh, it's going to be way better, I think, than having to deal with the ace bandage binding constantly. Um, and especially considering with the ace bandage, like, like last night, because my roommate has been um, been fantastic, and she's been helping me with with my binding and everything. Um, but it's hard to know, like, are, are we binding it too tight, not tight enough, that kind of thing. And I think we bound it a little too tight last night. I ended up with a little bit of, oh, I shouldn't say a little bit. I ha ended up with a lot of pain. Um, and it's like, okay, let's let's undo this. This hurts too much, and that kind of thing. Um, so with with an ace bandage, you you can't really control, you know, the the you can't know the precise uh, amount of compression that you need. Sometimes you do it too tight. Sometimes you don't do it tight enough. Um, and, and a compression vest is designed, you know, once once you know you you have to measure yourself and make sure you get the right measurement. But then um, it's designed to give the exact right amount of pressure uh, and everything so I'm going to be doing that instead because I, I have to continue having pressure uh, and compression for at least another six weeks uh, while I'm healing and stuff so uh, it's just going to be a lot better plus with the vest I can slip it on myself and zip it I don't need my roommate to come in and, and, and wind me up with this with this big bandage around my chest all the time so uh, in the long run, that's going to be the better option. Um, overall, uh, I am very pleased with with everything, uh, with the results. I mean, obviously, I am still healing, and I've still got um, the surgical tape on, and, and things are still a little puffy and bruised and that kind of thing, so I don't know what the final result's going to look like, but from what I've seen everything so far, like with the nipple placement, with the incision placement and everything else. I'm really happy with with everything. It looks all very symmetrical and uh, and it, it looks really good for what it is at the moment. Uh, I look forward to once the bruising and the swelling goes down to see what the what the final final look is. But uh, my, my chest is now nice and flat. I don't have the breasts anymore and I, I, I've, I've hated those damn things since they grew in when I was a teenager. Uh, so the fact that they're gone now is it makes me very very happy um, I will be even happier once I am healed and I don't have to deal with being in pain and uh, and all that stuff I mean I'm, I haven't been in a lot of pain I have mostly uh, just taken uh, Tylenol for pain and then uh, they've had me taking Valium since I have to sleep sitting upright right right now um, I, I don't know for how much longer I have to sleep sitting upright but uh, because of that, it, 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 you can get muscle spasms in your back and in your neck and that kind of thing. And Valium, besides being a, a relaxant uh, for your, your mood and stuff, it's also a muscle relaxant. So it can help with twinged nerves and, and sore muscles and things. And so I have been uh, taking the Valium at night um, when I sleep so that I don't wake up like with too many kinks in my, my back and my neck and stuff. So that's been good. Um, and then also they had me for, for the first week taking um, Celebrex, which I know is prescribed usually for arthritis, but also for, you know, aches and pains and that kind of thing. So trying to keep me doing as much non-narcotic pain management as possible. Uh, although because of the whole mishap with the binder last night, uh, uh, with the ace bandage and everything, and I was in enough pain that I actually 
gave in and took an uh, oxycodone last night because I was like, okay, ow, this hurts too much, <laughs> and, and I was not falling asleep and things, so I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll give in and take a, a stronger pain med um, for, for tonight and see where it's at. Um, I did make sure, because one of the things they always, you know, are worried about, especially at the, because the, uh, the, the drains, I mean, they're, they're, they're literally like just, you know, in my, in my skin right here, um, is to make sure that there's no infection in anything. So that's obviously when I had the pain coming in, it's like, oh, first thing we got to check is make sure I'm not infected. Uh, but everything looks good. There's no redness or inflammation or anything that looks like, at least on the skin surface, um, that could be an infection. So just kind of keeping an eye on that right now and making sure it's clean and making sure it's um, uh, just, you know, uh, everything else. But the pain has dissipated, so uh, at this point I'm, I'm, not, I'm less worried than I was last night, so which is a good thing. But anyway, that is sort of my, my update, <laughs> uh, just in case of, of my longtime viewers, if, if you've been following my adventures on, on my transition and stuff uh, of, of what's going on. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm quite uh, I'm quite happy with where everything is right now. Other than of course the pain I had last night, I was not happy with that. But um, I think we've got that solved. I think that's uh, that's passed, and hopefully I'll get my my compression vest tomorrow. Um, I will not be giving you. Uh, I mean, you know, some people will will show their their uh, after surgery chests right away, and I'm like. It's too puffy and bruised and everything, and, and just, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, whether or not I ever actually reveal my chest um, on camera to the public, I don't know yet. I haven't decided. I've never been very, one to be very free with not wearing much clothing. <laughs> um, I think the, the least amount of clothing I've ever worn... Um, on camera or off was if you if you scroll back through my old videos back way before I transitioned and everything else and you find one of my honeymoon videos where I'm actually wearing a sarong um, and I'm literally that's all I'm wearing is a sarong just tied around my neck and everything but even then I'm fairly well covered I mean I, I, I don't have anything on my shoulders and my arms but everything else is covered <laughs> and even then I felt half naked <laughs> when I did that video but that's about that's about as, as least amount of clothing as you're ever gonna see me in and whether or not yeah I don't know yet um, I know people get curious about that kind of thing and if you really really want to know what a uh, post-top surgery chest looks like and you haven't seen it yet Google FTM top surgery you know post surgery there's lots of websites out there there are people who are brave enough to share and and stuff like that um, and it, I might change my mind maybe I will do a topless video at some point maybe I won't I don't know yet uh, I'm just not promising anything just in case you're curious uh, just because I just I, I've just never been much one for showing a lot of skin um, one way or the other and and I may or may not uh, ever change that stance um, Especially considering I'm getting older anyway. I mean, I'm going to be 48 this year. And so, it's not like I've got a hot bod. Uh, I, I am, I'm great. I, I'm very much embracing the dad bod that my, my, I'm, I'm developing and things. I'm, I do want to try and continue losing some weight after I have uh, recovered and healed from the surgery. But, um, I, you know, I, I'm not going to, like, start lifting and, and get big muscles or or anything like that. I want to just make sure that I'm healthy. That's my main focus of any kind of weight loss or any kind of exercise or anything. Um, and even if I don't lose a lot more weight, um, as long as uh, I, I remain healthy, that's my main goal. Um, I My blood glucose uh, at levels, my blood, my blood sugar has remained fairly healthy and it's actually dropped this year, which is fantastic. I've never been diabetic although I was always hovering between 90 and 100 um, and it, once you get over 100 you start getting into the pre-diabetes. Pre I've never gone over 100, I've always stayed under 100 but I've always been like in the 90s and it dropped down into the 80s um, this year which was like okay, I'm not sure how that happened because I wasn't trying to make it drop but it did and I'm happy about it so that's fantastic. 
but genetically I do have high cholesterol. I have always had high cholesterol, even back when I weighed, you know, in my 130s, and, and I'm currently in my 180s, 170s, 180s. My cholesterol has always been high. It's always been over 250. Um, and no matter what I do, it, it doesn't seem to be going down, and being on testosterone certainly is not helping the situation any. So, so there's that. So, um, my doctor has wanted me to wait until I'm uh, over 50 before putting me on a prescription stand. I've been taking um, kind of uh, naturopathic. Uh, there's a, a, a supplement called Red Yeast Rice, which is a natural statin um, that that people can take and stuff, and it's not regulated by the FDA, and so they can't sell it for that, but my doctor was like, just take that with some CoQ10, and it's at least been helping me manage my cholesterol levels to a degree. It might cholesterol levels were dropping, um, but then uh, once I got on T, it started going back up again, but we've kind of gotten to an equilibrium with it right now. Um, I don't think I'm in any, like, real danger. It's just, I just naturally have high cholesterol. It just happens to be a genetic thing. My grandfather had it. Um, I'm pretty sure that my other ancestors have had it as well. It's just something that no matter what I do, because I eat a fairly healthy diet, I'd say 80% of the time. Um, so it's not like I'm out there eating McDonald's every day or anything that could cause me to have high cholesterol normally. So, uh, so that's my, my only, my only thing is, is having to keep an eye on that and probably going on Lipitor or something like that once I hit 50, um, just to make sure I, I keep it managed and stuff and, and try and keep my, my heart healthy and that kind of stuff. But other than that, um... Yeah, that's, uh, that's my current update. I will try not to ramble this time and take up way too much time with everything. I just wanted to kind of give a, a fairly quick update and tell you that, yes, I'm alive. I survived my surgery. Everything's going well. And uh, I hope you guys, I don't think I will probably do another video before Thanksgiving um, or my birthday. I don't know. Uh, my birthday's in, uh, in December, so... Uh, but I will try and do at least one more video this year, maybe around the holidays or something. So until then, happy Thanksgiving to everyone in the U.S. And uh, hope you guys have enjoy your holidays. And then until next time, take care. Bye.